o'clock at night as bad in UK, in Canada, in Malaysia, in Indonesia. Some reports said it's bad in three countries, some reports said it's bad in five countries, some said seven countries, some said several countries. The fact is that technically and officially I am only banned in one country that is UK and we'll come to it later on. There's no other country that I'm aware of where I got an official letter or information that I have been banned to enter that country. There are news that I am banned in Malaysia. In fact, hardly three years back, in November 2013, I got the Toko Mahalitri Award, which is the highest award in Malaysia given by the King of Malaysia and the Prime Minister of Malaysia. Imagine the intelligence of Malaysia, but natural, they made a my records and then gave this award to me. So, and I was just there in Malaysia in the month of April, hardly three months back. And there I met the Prime Minister, the Deputy Prime Minister, the Home Minister, the Islamic Minister, the Sports Minister. In a span of about four days, I met about 15 ministers and chief ministers. Imagine I'm banned in the country and I'm meeting the head of the country, I'm meeting the king, I'm meeting the Deputy Prime Minister. It is an irony. So this is what the media does. It picks up some information they get from hearsay, from some gossip, and they give it in headlines as though it's a gospel truth. Regarding my ban in UK, the only country which technically I am banned, and officially am banned, is UK. And to tell you correctly, the word banned is not appropriate because in UK, banned means the person who's banned his lectures cannot be heard on the radio, on the television, his books cannot be sold. That is the meaning of ban. The right technical word for the UK is I am excluded. Excluded means my entry is not allowed in the country of UK. And to know the background of this, in the year 2009, just to tell you, I've been to UK several times. I've been there more than 14, 15, more than 20 times. And the last time I was there in 2009, the head of the anti-terrorism department, that is Charles Farr, he sent an officer who told me that you have a reach and you can reach those young Muslims who we cannot. So will you help us? And I told them, I'm most willing to help you as long as you guarantee me two things. Number one, you should not ask me to do anything against the Quran, which is the word of Almighty God, and the Sayyid Hadith, which is the saying of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. And they agreed. So imagine the head of the anti-terrorism department wanted my help to reach those people who they could not reach. And I'm aware that my popularity is there in different parts of the world, especially in UK. But just a few months later, in the year 2010, the Labour Party, which was ruling, it lost the election, and the Conservatives came to power. And in about three weeks' time, Less than one month coming to power, the Home Secretary Theresa May, she sent an official notice and said that I am not allowed to enter the country, though I had a valid visa, which was issued in 2009 for five years. It was a multiple entry visa. And it said that I am not conducive to the society of UK. And they quoted new sentences from my speeches and one speech she quoted that I gave in UK was that I said in my speech in UK that I condemn the 3,000 American killed in the 9-11 attack. I condemn more than 50 people killed in the tube bomb blast in London. I condemn more than 180 people killed in Bombay in the serial train bomb blast. But I also condemn the thousands of innocent people killed in Afghanistan, in Iraq, and in Palestine. Imagine she is not allowing me to enter the country and she thinks that I am not conducive for UK because I said besides disagreeing with the three first three attacks of 9-11 London bombing as well as Bombay serial train bomb blast, I also said I condemned the thousands of innocent people killed in Afghanistan, Iraq, 
and Palestine. And she doesn't like it. I went out of the way to prefix the word innocent before I mentioned the thousands of people killed in Afghanistan, Iraq and Palestine to be careful that no one misuses and say that I am supporting certain terrorists of this country. When I used the word Americans, I didn't prefix the word innocent, neither for UK, neither for India. Even going out of the way, she officially writes a letter. And imagine, it's illogical. No one in the right sense can ever agree that why am I not conducive when I'm condemning even the, the attack that took place in America, in London, in Bombay, why do they don't like when I condemn the attack that took place in Afghanistan, Iraq and Palestine? These are the double standards. So because of this, this letter said, I'm not allowed to enter. And normally, and technically, this is valid for three years. And the 2010 it was issued. So it, this letter was valid till 2013. So technically, I can apply for a visa for UK. As far as all the other countries in the world are concerned, I don't know of any other country in the world where I have been banned. Brothers and sisters, if you have never heard of the following hadith or you heard it before but needed a reminder, then make sure to make dua for me and the entire team who put this video together where you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the highest levels in Jannah. Ameen, Rabbil Alameen. But why? I will do so, but why? Why are you stressing on it this time? Because you're about to learn an absolutely amazing, amazing hadith and an amazing action item. Are you ready for it? Bismillah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and don't forget to say sallallahu alayhi this hadith is sahih, is authentic and the references can be found below.